Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of the heart of everyone assembled here be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Beloved in the Lord, I greet you all in the matchless name of the risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am I praise God for again giving me an opportunity to preach the word of God from the pulpit of Egmore Wesley Church and also thank the pastor for having given me this privilege of preaching the word of God. The topic as you see on the screen which I have chosen, specifically chosen on this Sunday, when we encounter the problem or conflict. How do we face it, handle it and overcome it? When we encounter a problem or conflict, how do we face it, then handle it and overcome it? Does it sound like a book written by Dale Carnegie who has written so many books on personality development and skills improvement, you know, how to stop worrying and start living, and then how to win friends and influence people. But this is not based on any of those books or writings, but based on the miracle that our Lord Jesus Christ performed by feeding more than 5,000 people with two loaves of bread five loaves of bread and two fish. Normally, when we face problem, when we encounter a conflict or crisis situation, there are four ways that people adopt. The first one is to flee from it, escape from it, avoid it, or ignore it, ignoring unmindful of your responsibility. And the second is freeze. You become a frozen person because you have put the problem in the cold storage. And therefore, you become insensitive and indifferent. And then, becoming like a statue or rock. Getting perplexed, maintaining stoic silence. You can keep silent without doing anything. The fourth one is, the third one, fight it, fight it out. Go on fighting and fighting and fighting. In that, emotion takes precedence over, emotion supersedes the reason and the Christian values. Because you have given place to your emotion to be stirred up. The final one is, face it. Prayerfully handling the problem or trouble or crisis or conflict. And then reasonably weighing the pros and cons and taking the right path according to God's plan in order to fulfill God's purpose. God's plan and God's purpose. So please turn with me to the passage that was read to us from Mark chapter 6 feeding of the 5,000, the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. There were, it is recorded there were 5,000 men and there might have been more than that because only men are counted and women are, and children are left out because it was written by the male authors, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So they did not want to include women it seems. 5,000 men, about 3,000 women, about 2,000 children. There would have been more than 10,000. And then, in that situation, how to feed so many people without sufficient resources, sufficient money, and there are so many problems that the disciples had encountered. They were pointing out, in 5,000 people are gathered, how to feed them. John says it was on a mount and if you read Matthew and Mark it says it was a desert place where more than 10,000 people gathered. And therefore, 
how to feed them was the problem how to provide food for them was the problem we encounter so many problems in life isn't it family life professional life neighborhood problems through neighbors problem through friends also sometimes and how do we handle it when we face it how do we overcome it all of us can any one of us say i don't have any problem in my life health problem all of us are facing so many problems and therefore the first is the approach of the disciples how did the approach how did the disciples approach this problem of feeding the people without sufficient resources and without money and the place was not conducive all these things were the problems before them so what they did they were having only horizontal view of the problem horizontal view of the problem and looking with human perspective looking with the looking at the problem with human perspective and therefore these 12 men started looking at the problem with magnifying glass and they magnified everything and said it is not at all possible first it was a problem of place a problem related to place what did they say this is a desolate desolate this is a desolate place a desert a wilderness how can we find food here in this wilderness in this desert desolate place how can we feed so many people it was a geographical problem the geographical location according to john is mount and according to matthew and luke mark it is a desert and therefore how can we solve it secondly it was a time problem it was too late very late i am giving all the references on the screen so that if you want you can see and verify um so it was a time problem thirdly it was a material problem or resource problem lack of sufficient resources we don't have sufficient resources to feed these people the demand is so much and where is the supply therefore send them away as we don't have resources to supply send the people away that was their attitude and then financial problem or economic problem they did not have sufficient money insufficient money the, all the 12 disciples started counting how much did they have in their wallets purses and it came to 200 dinaris according to the so they said we have collected made collection and all the 12 of us have 200 dollars or 200 dinaris is it sufficient no not at all so they were counting the money and said it is not enough it is not sufficient to supply to buy food for these people and then the fifth one is a statistical problem where they said numerically there are 5000 men what about women and children about 10000 okay then how can we feed so many people place the problem geographical problem and then time there is no money uh, time there is no it is very late all the shops would have been closed we cannot buy food for them and then there is no finance for that adequate resources for it and finally the numbers they started counting the heads first they started counting the rupee notes or dollars or dinaris how much did they have 200 dinaris then they started counting the heads and said only men come this side so we'll count only the men 5000 men okay so five problems they encountered that's what if you read all the four passages that i mentioned on because this is a unique this is a unique miracle why because it is the only miracle that has been recorded by all the four gospel writers and therefore it is something very special than other miracles and then what about jesus approach to the problem let us learn from the approach of jesus christ the disciples approach was negative totally negative whereas jesus approach was positive 
Jesus' approach was positive in order to find solution to the problem. It was a vertical view. And therefore, Jesus had divine perspective. Because Jesus had divine perspective, he was able to see the problem from through God's eyes as it, as it were. Through God's eyes. Divine perspective. Divine view. And therefore, here, vertical view and divine perspective in Jesus Christ. The disciples raised five objections. Objection, your honor. This is a desert. Objection, your honor. We don't have money. Objection, your honor. We don't have sufficient resources. So, objection, objection. To all these five views, negative views, Jesus now gives five commands or five directives which you can see. Corresponding to the five negative views or suggestions, Jesus now looks at the problem with divine perspective. He has the vertical view of seeing the problem through God's eyes. First he said, these people need not go away. You feed them. These people need not go away. You feed them. That means, don't try to escape. Don't try, try to flee from the problem. Take a flight. No. You have to face it. Encounter it. Handle it properly. And solve it. Therefore, don't treat people as intrusion. They are not causing inconvenience. So, don't send people away. Secondly, he says, how many loaves do you have? How many loaves do you have? Go and see in Mark 6.38. So, examine your resources. Take inventory of your own resources. It might be five loaves and two fish, or it might be two coins, whatever it might be. Examine your resources. Take inventory of what you have, what you have in your midst. And then the next approach is, bring them here to me. Only five loaves and two fish the boy had. Bring them here to me. Andrew reported, there is a boy who is having only five loaves and two fish. And Jesus immediately said, bring them. Bring them to me. See, here is the boy. And the boy is, has been brought by Andrew to Jesus Christ in order to provide five loaves and two fish. What is the thing that Jesus wants the audience to know at that time? He wanted the audience to know that you must convert your possessions into offerings. You possess five loaves and two fish. The boy. Other people were also having, but nobody wanted to give it. Nobody wanted to share it. Nobody wanted to admit that they had already brought food packets. But only this boy said, I am ready to give. Why you know? Because he was not brought by his parents. If his parents would have been there, they would have said, Sir, keep silent. Don't say. It is not sufficient for four of us. And why are you saying that we have five loaves and two fish? No, don't say that. So this boy came alone, it seems, with the food packet given by his mother. And therefore he said, I raised hand and said, here I am, ready to give five loaves and two fish. And Andrew immediately brought him to Jesus Christ. And the second thing that Jesus said, the third thing, bring them here to me. And therefore, convert your possessions into offerings. Don't say, I possess it. It is my own. Paul says, you yourself are not your own. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, Paul writes, you were bought with a price, you are not your own. You were bought with a price by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, you are not your own. You can't say, I am... I possess myself, I, I, I possess this thing, the money, the wealth, the property, anything. And this boy admitted that whatever he had, 
was given by God. Because we sing that hymn, no? I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice. I am thine, O Lord. What about your possessions? What about your belongings? Can you say, all these belong to you, O God. You have given to me. So, everything belongs to God. So, what is mine is thine, O Lord. I will share it. That was his Christian... That was the philosophy, philosophy of the Good Samaritan and the philosophy of this little boy. What I have, what is mine is thine, O Lord, I will share it. So he came forward and said, here are the five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me. And then fourth, Jesus, how does he handle the problem? Make the people sit down in groups of 50 each. Make the people sit down in groups of 50 each. So make people feel welcomed. Don't treat them as objects to be used and throw. To use and throw. Use and throw objects. Sometimes even politicians, how do they use people? Politicians use and throw. At the election time, they need people. But after the election, if they get elected, they will forget the, um, the area, the locality from which they were elected. They will forget everything and the people there. Isn't it? That's what we see. So, don't treat people as objects. They are subjects. So, make them sit down in groups of 50 each in order to have disciplined way of distribution. In order to have disciplined way of distribution. So, then finally, we find the fifth directive or the fifth command. Gather the leftover fragments. Gather up the leftover fragments. Why? Because in order to celebrate the bounty of God, the abundance of God. God has given more than we ask or think. As Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, He gives more than we ask or think or imagine. And therefore, celebrate the bounty of God and the abundance of God. So, gather up the leftover fragments and also realize your social responsibility to keep the environment clean. Come on, go on. Gather up the fragments. Why? Leftovers. In order to keep the place clean. So, five directives were given by our Lord Jesus Christ. The, the disciples had a negative approach, but Jesus had a positive approach. For them, the problems are only stumbling blocks. But Jesus said, problems are not stumbling blocks. Don't see them as stumbling blocks. Change your perspective. Change your perception. See them as stepping stones for success or achievement. See all your problems and troubles as stepping stones for success. And then what are the lessons we can learn? Five negative views by the disciples corresponding to that five positive commands by our Lord Jesus Christ and then what about the lessons that we can learn first Jesus concern you read in Mark chapter 6 verse 34 that Jesus had compassion on them compassion on the people as if they were shepherd without sheep as they were sheep without shepherds and therefore, as the good shepherd, I must be concerned about the sheep, about my flock. And therefore, I need to meet their needs. Isn't it? When he saw a great crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And after that, he wanted to feed them. It was a good shepherd, great shepherd's concern over the sheep, the flock. And secondly, we find... This is not to be simply seen as a miracle of multiplication. If it is to be seen as a miracle of multipli multiplication, then as if Jesus was performing a magic show, taking five loaves and then saying, now close your eyes, see only five loaves, only two fish, now see what I'm going to do as a magician does, and said, plenty. Oh, five loaves, multiplied. It's not simply a miracle to be seen as a miracle of multiplication but to be seen as a miracle of conversion of selfish human hearts selfish human beings 
the conversion of the hearts of selfish men and women why always hoarding always hiding what you have no remember that what you have has come from god that for you are not the owner of what you have you are only a steward you are only a steward and you have to render account to god for what you have so so to be seen as a miracle of transformation of the human hearts making the selfish men and women changing their hearts into becoming a sharing community by the example of the small boy and then thirdly we find that converting as i've said converting your possessions into offerings bring them to me offerings for god last week we have celebrated the mission festival i'm sure most of you would have contributed a lot for that but remember they are not your money god's money which was in your pocket as a church priest said we have go we are starting renovation project for our church i am going to share with you some news announcement um the therefore it's a happy news our church is going building is going to be renovated but the bad news is the money is still in your pockets in your wallets in your handbags that is the sad part of it so convert your possessions into offerings to the lord and then the next thing that we find feeding the people with loaves of bread is a symbolic act it's a symbolic act of offering himself as the bread of life jesus symbolic act of offering himself i'm going to offer myself as the bread of life for the world and you can i have given so many references so he moves from ordinary bread with small b to capital bread ordinary bread to capital bread that means i am that bread bread of life and then finally we find here that there is nothing impossible with god there is nothing impossible with god you know the angel when appeared to mary and said you are going to give birth to your son and she said how can that be i am still a virgin i am still unmarried and the angel said there is nothing impossible with god there is nothing impossible with god in luke chapter 1 verse 37 and again in luke chapter 18 verse 27 nothing impossible with god trust god do not look at the problem and say hey problem you are too big too great for me to handle i do not know what to do many a time we are confused isn't it and therefore we are unable to solve the problems of our life whereas when problems or troubles come look at the problem and say hey problem i have a great god i have a big god majestic god and you are nothing before him problem you are nothing before him trouble you are nothing before him and that is why we read the epistle lesson philippian chapter 4 verse 13 which says i can do all things through christ who gives me strength or who strengthens me i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and therefore this morning beloved let us trust god just now we sang the tamil chorus what is the tamil chorus neer maatram podum neer maatram podum that's the chorus no but andrew said we have a small boy with five loaves and two fish but can we feed 5000 people more than 5000 people with this what are they what are these five loaves and bread two five loaves of bread and two fish are they going to be sufficient nothing why should i unnecessarily call that boy we cannot do anything what did he say in tamil em maatram ivigal ithanai janangalukku em maatram singing neer maatram podum then when problems come em maatram is that it and again another english chorus very familiar chorus trust in the lord and don't despair he is a friend so true no matter what your troubles are jesus will see you through 
Isn't that a beautiful chorus? Do we really mean it when we sing? We trust in the Lord. The, whatever problems we may face, whatever difficulties we may encounter, we trust in the Lord and don't despair. For he is a friend so true. No matter what your troubles are, Jesus will see you through. So, let us join with Paul and say, I can do all things through Christ who infuses his power into me. That is the J.B. Phillips translation of the Bible. J.B. Phillips says, instead of who strengthens me, he who infuses his power into me. So, I am strengthened by his power. And therefore, I can face anything and overcome anything, handle anything and come out victoriously. Will that be your faith this morning before you leave this church? We are going to come to the altar to receive the body and the blood of our Lord. Are we going to say, Lord, infuse your power into me, strength into me through this wafer and wine that we are going to receive, through this bread and wine, so that we could go from this church as people who have been infused by your power, empowered by you in order to face the trials, tribulations, problems and crises of life. Will that be our prayer this morning, beloved? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for speaking to us through the written word of the scripture and through the spoken word of the message. We thank you, Lord, for enabling us to see how miserable we are following the example of the disciples. Always thinking and talking about negative things framing negative opinions and giving negative suggestions because we are not really empowered, enabled, infused by your power to handle the problem. We thank you, Lord, for enabling us to see how you handle the problem positively with vertical view, having divine perspective. Help us this morning to have divine perspective and see the problem with vertical view in order to handle it and overcome it successfully. You know the problems we face in life. We are unable to express it to our own family members, to our own friends because our heart is burdened. Many of us are loaded with so many burdens of life and help us to leave this place with the confidence that you will handle, enable us to handle them properly and Take the right path according to your plan in order to fulfill your purpose. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.